Howdy folks, and welcome back. If you're new here, strap on your tinfoil hat because we're going UFO hunting. This is my UFO hunting guide based off a few years of experience and multiple sightings. If you're not a member of the Discord group, consider joining. It is a casual group of people that will attempt to go UFO hunting countrywide at the same time once per month. The day and time is still being voted on, but we'll soon have a set time. The link is in the description. Since safety is always first, we're going to start there. Now, most of this is common sense, but we're going to cover it anyway. Make sure you dress for the weather. If it's cold, wear layers. If you're planning on stopping on the side of the road, wear a reflective vest or jacket. Regardless, it's good practice if you go on walks when it's dark. I'll save my rant, but it is safer. Always focus on driving. You don't want to be staring at the sky with your camera out and crash into something. Double check your car and ensure everything is up to date and in working condition. You don't want to get pulled over for something that's easily avoidable. Lastly, obey all your local laws. Don't go on to private property or stay past closing times on public property such as parks. At least in Minnesota, most if not all parks close at 10 o'clock, so be mindful of that. Moving on to general tips. Some of these are common sense again, but there's a few little things I learned along the way. Before you even go out UFO hunting, you'll want to get familiar with whatever equipment you're using. Learning in the dark while you're trying to record what might be a UFO is a terrible time to be learning how to change your settings or what settings you should be using. I recommend practicing on planes at night. Find settings that give you the best results of a plane flying and use those while trying to record something strange. I do have a couple tips for settings coming up, but those are really based off your equipment and won't be the same for everyone. Be organized. It's extremely frustrating if you go wherever you're going and you forget an SD card, cable, battery, or any other little part that is vital to the function of your equipment. This has happened to me more times than I would like to admit. Having extra batteries or a charger is not a bad investment. You might forget to charge your device, or you might go through more than you're expecting. If you're planning on driving to a location, you might end up recording through a window or a windshield. This isn't ideal, but I do it. You'll want to carry some glass cleaner and rags to get rid of any smudges on the glass. Plus, make sure there's no lights on inside your car reflecting onto the window. Dim all your dash lights or turn them off completely if possible. The lights reflecting onto the window, especially if there are smudges, will cause unwanted lights in your footage and outright ruin it. A must-have app is Flight Radar 24. It tracks flights and will display their location, speed, and altitude. It doesn't show all the planes, but the vast majority will be on there. I think it's real time only. You won't be able to check flights after the fact, at least with the free version. This is one reason why a dedicated camera is recommended. If you have to use your phone to check the radar before you hit record, you might be missing out. Another cool program is Stellarium. It's both an app, website, and computer software. This will show you satellites, the space station, stars, planets, etc. You can go back or forward in time, so it's less important to check it on the spot. I personally use the desktop software since it's easier than the app, and it has helped me debunk myself. And it is one of the first things people will ask if you record a bright light that disappears. Verify if the ISS was in your area by inputting your location, date, and time. It's an easy thing to check, and now you know how. Lastly, depending on how much time you're spending, you might get bored. A few things to help pass the time is listening to music or a podcast, and I personally got into astrophotography after UFO hunting for a couple years. But that opens up an entirely different can of worms and your wallet. Alright, now we're going to talk about recording. Never use digital zoom, and I'll show you why right now. I don't have the best phone, but this is a great example. The picture on the left is with no zoom, it is just point and shoot. The picture on the right is 10 times zoom. Yes, the dumpster is larger, but you really don't see much detail. Now the picture on the left is the same original picture without the zoom, but I zoomed in on my computer. There's not really a difference between camera digital zoom and computer digital zoom. You can always zoom in after the fact on a computer, but you can't zoom out on a computer. It is best to get as clear as possible footage and you can play with it after the fact if needed. Now here's a quick example of optical zoom. The picture on the left is taken with my camera and a 50 millimeter lens, while the picture on the right was taken with a 600 millimeter lens. That's 12 times more powerful, so close to the phone's digital zoom. Now here's the 50 millimeter lens zoomed in with my computer. 
My camera has a lot of megapixels so you can get away with some digital zoom, but you still can't make out much detail. And the sticker on the right is just a blur. Now if I zoom in just a little bit, with my 600 millimeter lens, you can actually read the little sticker. Now this was taken with a $4,000 camera midday with good lighting. Don't expect this quality of anything at night. This is just showing you the difference between digital zoom and optical zoom. Higher megapixel cameras will help, but it's not going to work magic for you. All right, I just got done telling you never to use digital zoom and I'm gonna contradict myself immediately afterwards. To get the best focus, I aim at a star if possible, if not, a very distant light. I'll use the digital zoom to make the light as big as possible on my screen, and then I will adjust the focus until the light is as small as possible. From there, I zoom out, and my camera is now focused on a distant object, and it's not likely you'll need to adjust it after that. So only use digital zoom to help with focusing, never for actually recording and hoping you'll get more detail out of it. If you have a tripod, I suggest you use it or invest in a cheap one with an adapter for your phone if you're using that. If you can't use a tripod, hold the camera with both hands and press your elbows into your stomach and lean against a wall or solid object. This will help minimize camera shake. If you're recording with a DSLR, you have to use the live view rather than the viewfinder. If you buy a red dot sight with an adapter, you can look through the scope to ensure your target is in frame. This also allows you to have a third point of contact since you can press the sight into your cheek, increasing stability. This is extremely beneficial, especially if you're using a longer focal length lens. When you're recording something, always try to get a stationary reference point in frame. A star, a tree, a house, anything that doesn't move. It will confirm any abnormal movements that might happen. If it's just a dot on a black background without a reference point, it could easily be dismissed as camera shake. But if there's a stationary object, you can determine actual movements. If you see something slightly odd, start recording. If it ends up being a plane or the space station, you can easily delete the footage later. But if it turns out to be something unusual, you'll regret not hitting record sooner. Record your target until it is no longer visible. Don't just end the clip. I've seen a lot of videos of something that might have been odd, but probably wasn't, where they just ended the video. If it disappears, show it disappearing, and then scan the area. If it zips off, record that part. If it just slowly flies off, record it the entire time. If you can see it, you should still be recording. If you determine it's a plane, then yeah, stop recording. Here's a few things that I look for when I go UFO hunting. These are based off my sightings from 17-ish years ago. Anything flying low to the ground is relatively abnormal. Anything that's flying pretty slow is also unusual. But keep in mind perspective. It might be flying straight at you or away from you so it'll look like it's not moving much. If it's flying perpendicular to your position, it'll look like it's going faster. Things that are solid white and bright pique my interest. But I've also seen some strange red lights that vanished. So anything solid red or solid white, keep an eye on it and just hit record. If it has flashing green or red lights on the wings, it's probably a plane. However, my buddy remembers seeing a red light on the bottom of a UFO that we saw together and that one defied physics. So even if it has a flashing red light, don't immediately dismiss it. And if you spend enough time in the same area, you'll start to learn the normal flight paths, and that'll help identify planes. Also take a look at a map and see where the airports are. Now we're gonna talk about location. If you have a backyard with a decent view of the sky, you really might as well just stay there. You'll never forget something at home, you won't waste time or gas driving, and if you get bored or cold, you can just go inside. The other option is, if you've seen something crazy before, go back to that spot. My logic is, if they were there once, they probably had a reason to be there and they might go back. That's what I personally do, but I also go to a public park that has an observatory. I can set up all my equipment, use their telescopes, and I have people to talk to, and I can stay there all night if I want to. But that's also a two hour round trip for me. If you've never seen one before and can't use your backyard, I recommend taking a look at a UFO sighting map. Find a high concentration of reported sightings near you and find a park or back road with a nice pullout spot with a good view of the sky overlooking that area. You can also look for power plants or military bases and again, find a convenient spot that overlooks them. The majority of my sightings were all within a few miles 
of two power plants, one of which was a nuclear one. I'm not sure if that's a coincidence or they're actually interested in our nuclear power. Regardless, if you have one nearby, it is not a terrible option. Places you'll want to avoid are parking lots with a lot of overhead lights. The light pollution will make it harder for you to see and it will ruin your chances of decent footage. The darker and further away from the cities, the better, but I understand not everyone will be willing to travel. Lastly, I will say that you shouldn't expect immediate results. The chances of seeing something mind-blowing is pretty slim. If you're lucky enough to see something and record it, don't expect quality footage. Remember, you're doing this for fun and to maybe learn something new. I wish I could share all my experiences with everyone, but the best I can do is encourage people to go out and have their own. That wraps up all my advice, and I'm sure I forgot something, so if you have anything to add, please feel free to leave a comment. If you have any questions, I'll do my best to answer them or elaborate on anything that wasn't clear. If you made it this far, please consider joining the Discord group if you're not already a member. And let's get some more cameras aimed at the sky. And as always, thanks for stopping by, and stay safe.